Okay, Tenor Madness in the key of B flat. We're going to get down to sort of the nuts and bolts of this tune and practice it hands separately, which you should do. Uh, don't worry about the tempo. What we uh, want to be thinking about is, you know, playing it accurately and smoothly with a good, with a, a good steady beat. So if you, if you don't have your uh, music from earlier in the semester, uh, you can go to the email and uh, um, print out this attachment for Tenor Madness. Remember that there's one version in uh, where the seventh is the lowest interval of the first chord or the one chord, and then there's the other version where the third is the lower interval for the first chord, and that will help us keep our, our, uh, our left hand voicings in a good register on the piano. Okay, so uh, I think we'll take the left hand first and practice that. Uh, so where, where do we get started, okay? Uh, the one chord in the key of B flat uh, is B flat seven because it's a blues, all right? So it's not a major seventh and it's not a, a minor seventh. There is such a thing as a minor blues, but uh, tenor madness is not a minor blues. So uh, it's a seventh chord, okay? So here's the root. So the seventh is a minor seventh, not a half step away from the root. It's a whole step lower. And then the major third is D. Okay, all right, we are paring these chords really down. Now they don't even have the root in them because our friendly bass player is gonna play the roots for us, uh, at least pretty often, okay? So there's the seventh and the third. Uh, smooth voice leading being what it is, it's so easy to go to the E flat seventh chord or the four chord, just take both notes down a half step, okay? So if we think about E flat now, G is the third of the chord, and D flat is the seventh of the chord. And then we can go back to B flat seven. And as I have been suggesting uh, all year, pretty much, is that think about uh, which note is which note is the third in the chord, and uh, is it on the bottom or is it on the top? So this in this case, it's the upper note. In the fourth measure, all you have to do is remember it goes up a step and down a step, up a half step, down a half step. That's the fourth measure. If you don't think of that ahead of time, you might forget which interval is supposed to go up by half step, and that could really throw you off. Okay, then the fifth measure, very easy. We're going back to the E flat seven, but we're staying on it for two measures this time, and going back to B flat seven. And here's where it gets a little bit more interesting, okay? Uh, in jazz, sometimes we substitute a dominant seventh uh, instead of a minor seventh, for the sixth chord, and that's what we're doing here on G7. Okay. The third of the chord and the seventh of the chord. In each case, the third in the chord and the seventh chord, as you go through the progression, it switches each time, right? Here's the B flat seven with the seventh on the bottom. Here's the G seventh with the third on the bottom. C minor seven, seven, three, right? But this time, a minor seventh chord. Okay, there's that minor third, there's a minor seventh, okay? G7 to C minor seven. C minor seven to F7. Just lower the B flat down to A, and you're good, okay? And then, the last two measures, it's the same progression as you just played, but each chord only gets two beats. B flat seven, G7, C minor seven, F7, okay, and then we're back to the top. Let me practice that in time. One, two, one, two, three, four, two, three, four.
okay. Pretty satisfied with that. Um, you know, it takes a lot of repetitions to, to be able to uh, play it uh, where it really feels uh, you're really confident with it. Okay, so play it through many times. All right, now we're going to switch over to the right hand. Uh, and it's kind of a little four note motif that repeats with a variation. Uh, so when we're sounding the one chord, um, we're always going to be starting with the major third, all right? So we're in the key of B flat, so the major third is D. That little shape like that, okay? But when we go to the four chord, we're going to lower that upper note by a half step. Okay? This note, the D flat, coincides with, in this case, the E flat seventh chord, okay? This would sound terrible. Okay, so Sonny Rollins was wise to go to the D flat. And then back to that first motif we played, but with a little variation. Okay, so uh, just involving those steps, all right? And it shouldn't involve any thumb crossings or anything like that. You can just be in, in one shape like that, nice and easy. Okay, and then on the fifth bar, when we go back to the E flat seven chord, or the four chord, again, we're gonna we're gonna pair that up with the uh, the flatted or the minor third there, and repeat that, and then go back to the major third, and then and this is the eighth bar. Okay, uh, it m might sound a little crunchy if you play it very slowly, but it sounds good in context. All right, and then here's probably the part that you're gonna need to spend the most most time on. Uh, in terms of the right hand. And I'm, I'm really going to get my left hand out of the way so that my thumbs don't, you know, compete with each other. Okay, so I'm thinking about the C minor triad, or the, the two chord. All right, so um, Sonny comes from the root down to the fifth, bounces back up to the root, okay? This is all against C minor. Then he kind of comes down a, a minor with a major seventh. Okay, and you can finger that different ways. For me, most of the time, it's, I just like to go to my forefinger on the. All right, that's kind of the way I pretty much always do it. I'll show you what to do it when, when the minor chord is a, uh, starts on a flat key. And then it jumps up to the minor seventh, and it approaches the third chromatically. Kind of a nice little chromatic approach sound. And then back to your riff. Okay, all right, so I already played it in B flat for you. Now I want to think about transposing it to the key of A flat, okay? Um, if you look at the, at the lead sheet, it's gonna tell you which keys are gonna be best for which uh, inversion of the one chord, okay? So A flat is gonna be another key where we're gonna wanna use the seventh as the lower interval and the third as the upper interval, okay? All right, so we'll go through it slowly, all right? Um, now here's the sixth chord as a dominant chord now I'm going to go I'm on the B flat minor chord now, the two chord. Okay, so the root and the fifth, right? Now I'm gonna slide, or if I use my pinky on the B flat, I'm just gonna slide down from the black to white. That's my, that's the way I prefer to, to do that. If, if the first note is is uh, 
on a black key. And then the turnaround. So let's break that down again, just like we did in the key of B flat. All right, we'll start with the left hand again. Um, a flat is the root of the one chord, all right? Then the minor seventh, the major third, okay? And then to go to the four chord, nice and easy. Just lower both of those notes by a half step. And then that represents D flat seventh, or the four chord in the key of A flat. Back to A flat seventh, okay? And we're gonna remember that the upper note is the one that wants to go up a half step and down a half step. That actually creates a 2-5, but you don't even have to get that technical about it. Just the third goes up by a half step and comes back down a half step, all right? And then back to our good old four chord, okay? Back to the one chord, okay? And we got about, think about what the uh, six chord is in the key of A flat. F is the root, so it's an F seventh chord. So we want the major third and the minor seventh. Okay, we go from A flat, seven, to F seven. B flat minor seven, okay? This one is a minor chord, all right? So minor seventh, minor third, the minor seventh goes down, creates an E flat seventh chord, and then we repeat that. A flat seven, F seven, B flat minor seven, E flat seven. And you're home, okay? And then again, the right hand, uh, the major third is gonna go with the one chord. And the minor third is gonna go with the D flat chord. And back to that major. I'm remembering that the C goes up. The minor third goes with the four chord, that's the fifth measure. Back to the one chord with the major third. And we practice that six chord. Okay. I'm really getting my left hand out of the way. Okay, so tender madness in, uh, in the key of B flat and then again in the key of A flat, all right? If uh, we're playing it in the key of E flat, we're gonna start with the third as the lower interval. And the right hand is gonna come up into this higher register because if I play it down here, my hands are really gonna be competing, all right? So. C7, F minor, okay, Tender Madness in some different keys. Enjoy.